Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows full terms at mintmobile.com. If you're struggling to lose weight, you've probably heard about weight loss medications like Wigovi or ZepBound. And you might be wondering if they're right for you. Meet Plush Care a leading telehealth provider with doctors who are there for you day and night to partner with you in your weight loss journey. If you qualify, they can safely prescribe you medication from the comfort of your own home. To get started, visit plushcare.com slash weight loss. That's plushcare.com slash weight loss. plushcare.com slash weight loss. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the financial freedom podcast and i'm your host dr christopher Liu. i'm really delighted to have on our guest uh, steve cloward he's the host of life after addiction and indictment but today's talk is going to be all about mindset uh, addictions trauma and entrepreneur and resilience so i'm happy to welcome steve to the show welcome Hey, appreciate you having me. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. I know we had uh, connected through um, Podmatch and, um, you know, in two to three minutes, just briefly um, tell the audience who you are and how you came to do what you do. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. My name is Steve Cloward. Uh, I've been married for 33 years. I've got four boys and a girl, uh, two granddaughters. And I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, and I started my podcast about two and a half years ago after kind of going through a rough time in my life, got diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 1987, uh, and that started a 14-year addiction to opiates Mm. and got sober from that. The reason my podcast is named Life After Addiction and Diamond, most people just assume, you know, when they see the addiction side that I was indicted due to drug, you know, dealing or something, but... I'd been sober for many years and uh, had a large real estate appraisal firm. And there was some crazy double mortgage closed deals going on that uh, I had six appraisers working for me. And a few of them did appraisals that the loans funded on uh, when they're on big jumbos, there's two loan, you know, two appraisals required. They fund off the lower of the two, which they was my guys. And the guy that was doing these deals was doing what's called double closes. So they threw a conspiracy case together. And of course, in a conspiracy case, I got to have a title guy, appraiser, lender, the whole nine yards. And because they funded on the lower of the two appraisals, we were I was thrown into that indictment with, with my company and ended up going to federal prison over it. Yeah. And so, you know, talking about, so one thing is, uh, so you basically, you reclaimed your life after, you know, addiction, uh, but- one thing you talk about, which is really interesting, is until you change your mindset, you can change your life. So t- t- tell us about like that, because it's really, you know, inspiring to see people climb out. You know, we only see the victorious, but, you know, right. the bottom, <laughs> to the, that that's pretty tough to climb. Yeah, and I made it really tough, honestly. <laughs> um and kind of the reason that I got passionate about this is number one, I think as human beings, anytime we help somebody, that's what makes me feel the most fulfilled, you know, over any amount of money I make or anything. Um, and so that was obviously a driving force to, you know, try to help people with similar issues. But because I was successful before and then end up spending time in prison, you know, I came out of prison I couldn't have my company anymore. I couldn't have a real estate appraisal license. So um, I didn't know what I was going to do. And as you come out, I remember my dad, he was a dentist. And he re- when he retired, I remember him telling me he, you know, I didn't know who he was anymore because he wasn't Dr. Cloward. And I didn't really understand that until I came home from prison and got out of the halfway house. And then it was like, man, who am I, you know? Because I didn't have a career, you know, I used to be active in the community and I had 
the freedom to to do certain things, to help other people and do things in the community. And now all of a sudden it was like, I didn't know who I was or what I was going to do. And uh, it took me, I spent a lot of money on coaches, courses, consultants, masterminds. And it took me eight years to finally realize that nobody was coming to save me. And I think one of the biggest hurdles I have obviously was the mindset. And one of the biggest issues in my mind was I forgot how much hard work and how many years I put into building a very successful real estate appraisal firm. And I had some other business too. You know, you kind of forget that. And I kind of felt like it, it happened overnight, which it didn't. So I kind of expected that I just get there overnight, which put me in a trap of looking for shortcuts and thinking that I could just hire this certain person and they would, you know, this, this manager and he would take care of things. And all of a sudden, you know, and so I just realized that I was sitting kind of in a victim mentality. Um, and so I just, you know, I was working with a group of guys in a, in a mastermind and uh, the coach that I was working with, he talked about this conscious self-creation statement. And, you know, I had been exposed to a lot of those things, personal development things and, you know, manifestation and meditation, whatever, but I'd never really put it into play. I think sub, you know, from a standpoint of how I operated before. Um, and in fact, let me back up a second. Cause at one of those uh, days at that mastermind, we would do what's called a walk and talk, you know, would, would go through some information for an hour, hour and a half, and then would do a walk and talk, meaning you'd get it with a partner and then would walk a certain distance, you know, that was already outlined at the resort we were at. And one of us would talk on the way there, one talk on the way back to discuss the things that we had just gone over. And I remember saying before prison, you know, I was, I did this or whatever. I can't remember the topic, but the guy looked at me and said, why do you look at your life as before and after? And that I, I'd never even thought of it, but as I, you know, really took that in, I realized I was doing that a lot, you know, in other conversations as well, not just at that event, but, you know, for a year or two prior. And it, it just really woke me up. And so anyway, this conscious self-creation statement is, you know, something where you put together, you know, whatever it is you want to achieve, uh, whatever you want to do, um, whatever you want to give, anything. But it's basically writing down, you know, I am, I have statements as, but then as if you already are there, you know, and believing it and feeling it. Um, and so I did that and, you know, it's most powerful if you can daily read it, write it, see it and hear it. You know, of course I wrote it out to start. And then once I memorized it, you know, I was saying it out loud. So I would, you know, say it and hear it. Um, and I got into this routine of just saying it every morning, right. When I would get in the shower, I'd just do it. And, you know, it was just, I mean, it's, it's interesting how that works. And, you know, I think that's becoming more mainstream type stuff these days, but, you know, even 10 years ago, you talk about meditation. I think the main, most people would think that's kind of woo woo or wondering what you're talking about, you know, um, but, and manifesting and, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, with it, within two years of doing that, and of course, hard work, um, I had accomplished the things that I had talked about other than two things. And I was like, dang, you know, and so, you know, I kind of look at it like I kind of was rewiring my mind because the more you say something, and the more you hear it, you, you know, whether you realize it or not, you're, you know, you're believing it, you start to believe it. And like I said, I thought I, I believed everything happened overnight you know, to get success the first time around. But I also finally realized that wasn't true. And so I needed to stop procrastinating the little things that make a difference. And that also, because I was so broken uh, from a confidence standpoint as well, that when you do those little things and get those little wins each day, you know, it's no different than money compounding. That stuff compounds to build that confidence. And, you know, once I started doing that, everything shifted. Mm, yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. It's like, um, so it's basically uh, getting leverage and, um, and it's basically like you talked about, it's um, 
rewiring your neural pathways, forming new habits. Um, and then one thing is talking about is um, uh, this stop letting the past get in the way of your future. Yeah. I just, like I said, I, I, I didn't really realize what I was doing, you know, and it was, it's, it was really interesting too, because when, when I got indicted, um, you know, I got served a gag order a year before I was handed the federal indictment. And the gag order was basically saying, you know, as an appraiser, my office, we were doing a lot of review work on other appraisals uh, for lenders. And so the way the invest state investigator pitched it was basically, you know, if we need to see someone else's appraisal, you know, we're going to ask you for it. And, you know, you have to give it to us. And I was like, it's no big deal. I was never told I was the target of an investigation, you know, uh, which they're supposed to, that you should know that. Um, and uh, anyway, when he came and handed me that indictment, I was just, I didn't understand how serious that was, you know. Um, but anyway, I I don't even remember where my train of thought was going there, but it, uh, like I say, it just was a situation where I was just, like I said earlier, broken. My confidence was just shot. Mm. Yeah. And then, um, so one thing is, um, what, uh, basically you, you know, this process of is basically healing yourself and, um, reclaiming your life. And it's, uh, you know, once you get, once you get there, it's like, you know, you're a different person, you're a better person. Um, and then basically, you know, all of the stuff that ha happened in the past is, is kind of cleaning that up. And then, um, one thing is, uh, what keep getting in the way of your future before you finally reclaimed your life again? Yeah, I appreciate that because that was where I was going and I kind of forgot. Uh -huh. But, you know, I was, like I said, I was kind of defining who I was as Steve before prison and Steve after. So because I wasn't measuring up to myself on what I thought was meant success uh, because of the things I had blocking me, which were all created by me, you know, they were all based on the thoughts and beliefs I had, um, which frankly weren't true. And so I was the one, you know, getting in the way. And so until I was able to, number one, it's like addiction until, you know, you admit and see that you have a problem and admit it, you're, you have no hope, you know? And so until I was able to really see what was going on and own it, because I, you know, I believe everything that we have in our lives to the very moment right now is a direct result of choices we made, period. Nobody else, you know, and I used to blame the guy that was kind of the main guy in the case that was doing these deals. Um, I knew him since I was a kid, or I should say our family, my parents knew his parents. My father was a dentist. His father was an orthodontist. They both did real estate developments together. And in 1979, my folks were supposed to be on a plane from Provo, Utah to California with that couple, his parents, and they backed out the night before. And it was uh, January 9th of 79. I remember like it was yesterday because they ended up taking their two young daughters, seven and five in my parents' place. And that plane crashed that night and killed them all. And anyway, it was the youngest son of the three sons that were left that was doing these deals and, you know, because he knew me and I mean, we were one of the appraisal firms that he used. And there was a time that, you know, when I got indicted, first of all, I believed he would just, you know, tell the truth and nothing would happen. Um, but so I kind of blamed him for quite a while. In fact, it was a few months into my prison stay that I finally just realized, hey, it wasn't his fault. We didn't have to do the appraisals. It's irrelevant if they were fraudulent or not you know, and it, uh, like I said, until I just owned things and owned the situation that I was facing my life and realized that that didn't define me because before I was totally open when it all happened, I didn't hide it. You know, I wasn't embarrassed or ashamed because I knew the truth. In fact, one of the things that I often say is, you know, in my addiction, when I was fully in my addiction, there are things that would have put me in prison, you know, that I did. And, but that's what was so weird is this case, there was nothing I was guilty of intentionally doing, you know, that should have landed me there. But it was one of those situations, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And I kind of needed it, you know, 
some people that doesn't make sense, but you know, I was just a workaholic. Everything was about money and stuff. And I was thinking that that's also what defined who I was. And, you know, when you get everything taken away, you lose everything. It doesn't take even a few days sitting in federal prison to realize what really matters. And so as I, you know, started on that and take total ownership of everything in my life, then I was able to move forward and let go of the past. And then, it, like I said, you know, working on my mind is what helped me move forward. Hmm. Interesting. Um, you know, as we come to the end of this, um, one thing is, uh, what's the number one thing that's allowed you to be successful after the, you know, uh, what's what's been the number one thing? I think really just believe, you know, you have to believe in yourself and then doing things that, you know, you're passionate about because then, it, you know, hard work is, is a, I think it's a no brainer. It takes hard work no matter what. I mean, even if you get lucky, you put yourself in a position to, to create that luck, I believe. And to put yourself in that kind of position also took effort and work. Um, there's just no shortcuts. And so just putting in the effort, Living your word to yourself, I think, is one of the most critical things we can do. Also others. But first, if you can't live your own word to yourself, then you can't live it with others either. And, you know, once you can do those things and just own own everything that you have, then in your life, you can you can create whatever you want and do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the uh, and the other thing is talking about is um, how do you manifest things in your life that you want is just basically the law of attraction or um you know there's this idea of like trying too hard versus like it's supposed to come and flow to you so i'm curious i've always it's, tried to understand this dichotomy it's such a deep subject in different ways you know as i've learned more because i remember when the law of attraction the secret came out right and i remember you it's not just going to happen if you put up a vision board you know I remember being in family situations with my dad and the brothers and a couple of brother-in-laws. And, you know, I was kind of a jerk because I would leave because maybe they were talking about something negative. Right. <laughs> and so I would do kind of, not that that's dumb, but it also depends, you know, is the negativity, the true negativity, or are they just talking about something that happens to be negative? Not that they're being negative, but so you have to go much deeper and, you know, cause you can say, you, you know, you can create your conscious self creation statement as well, but if you don't feel it, like you have to put yourself in the state of what it would feel like if you're already, you know, living the life that you want already in the relationship you want already as healthy, you know, as you'd like to be or whatever. And because you can't just go through the motions and think it will happen. That's better not. But, you know, there's a great podcast out there called Next Level Soul on YouTube that there's some great, great guys talk about this stuff a lot. And it's just, like I say, it's, if you're just going to go through the motions and think it'll happen, it's not going to happen. But if you're sincere about it and really focus on it, I mean, I, I know guys that, have gotten to the point where damn near, you know, it seems like they can manifest stuff within days. Sometimes, you know, it's just, it just takes work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, how can people contact you, follow you? I know you have a podcast and, you know, um, and reach out to you. Yeah. They can, you know, lose my podcast. My information is always in the show notes there. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook under just Steve Cloward one the number one um, LinkedIn, Steve Cloward, pretty much everything, all social media, Steve Cloward. Um, and, or my, my website, life after addiction and indictment.com. Um, or you can email me at Steve at Steve Cloward.com. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, let's thank Steve for coming onto the podcast. Really. I chose this because mindset and manifesting and rewiring your brain, it takes work. Um, and um, you know, we all have to go through some sort of crisis to get to the next level. So, and uh, all of Steve's resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. 
Hey, my pleasure. Appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Take care.